Hi everybody, I am looking like I have huge eyes here. <laughs> I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I am the creator and founder of the Galveston Diet and I am um, coming to you live today to talk about therapeutic fasting and women and perimenopause. Now, a lot of misinformation that floats around social media and the internet concerning intermittent fasting and whether or not it's good for women. And so I'm here today to dispel some of these myths and give you the actual science as I understand it for women in menopause. So for those of you who don't know me, I am Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I am the creator and founder of the Galveston Diet. I'm also a board certified obstetrician gynecologist and I'm certified in culinary. I'm a certified culinary medicine specialist, which is basically I'm a nutrition specialist as well. So um, I, in the program, The Galveston Diet, I am a big proponent of intermittent fasting as it is therapeutic. And so when I talk about fasting, I'm talking about therapeutic fasting, fasting for the health benefits, not strong about fasting, I'm talking about therapeutic fasting, fasting for the health benefits, not starvation, but utilizing intermittent fasting as a tool to improve our health. And today in this talk, I specifically want to address some of these myths that are out there that a woman at this age should not fast, that it's going to do this to her cortisol or bump that or do whatever. And I can tell you after extensively reviewing the medical literature that most of those claims are just claims. They are based in someone's opinion. They're not actually scientific, meaning they've not been, it's not a theory that's been tested or proven to be correct. And I don't want to dissuade a woman who is potentially considering this as a, as a wonderful therapeutic option for her long-term health to be dissuaded by these you know, people who usually these are just marketers who are trying to market their product and steer you away from fasting. Remember, no one makes any money off of fasting. <laughs> it is free and anybody, almost anybody can do it. There are some people who cannot fast, I give you that, but um, just about anybody can do it. And no one's gonna make money off of you fasting. So um, fasting is a real therapeutic tool that has been practiced since millennia by different cultures and medical systems. Um, so when you go back and you look at like the Greeks, the Romans, Hippocrates, all that, you know, and multiple cultures throughout the world who utilize fasting. So I grew up fasting during Lent as a religious purpose. You know, multiple cultures use fasting for religious purposes. So because of that, we have so much information historically about fasting and its safety profile. It's only really now um, in the last few years that we're truly coming to grip and understand the medical and health benefits, okay? Um, so everybody always wants to know, how do I fast, what do I fast, can I do this, can I do that? Okay, there's multiple ways to, to fast. Fasting is just time-restricted feeding. And whatever that window that you're practicing, and I'll, I'll give you the biology behind it, Whatever fasting window you choose to fast, um, you definitely can get out of a therapeutic window. So when I fast, it is specifically for therapy. It's a therapeutic option for me to improve my health, and I'm gonna go over that. So what happens, and I'm gonna use some generalizations here, what happens in our body physiologically when we fast is this. So our preferred method, and we must have carbohydrates to survive, um, of burning fuel, you know, for quick energy is carbohydrates. So when we eat a meal with protein, fat, and carbohydrates, um, the carbohydrates are burned. The fat is broken down. I mean, excuse me, the protein is broken down into its component amino acids, um, which then go throughout the body uh, to do their jobs or maybe reformulated into muscle protein or heart protein or whatever proteins we need in our body. Um, and then fat is ingested and then broken down into fatty acids and then goes off to do whatever and is possibly stored. So glucose is burned first, okay? Um, whatever glucose is floating in our bloodstream, once we burn through whatever's readily available from our last meal, then the body turns to the liver to release glycogen and that is then converted into energy for fuel. Once you burn through the glycogen, then the body's like, what are we gonna do? 
So then it turns to breaking down fat into component fatty acids, which are then used for fuel. So when we're talking about the magic of fasting, it's getting through the burning of the carbohydrates from our last meal, getting through burning the, burning the glycogen, and then the juicy, the good stuff, where we start seeing the health benefits is when we start burning the fat um, that is stored for fuel. This is a natural, normal process. It's absolutely fine to do, okay? It keeps us from dying when we run out of carbohydrates. So, the it takes for most people, not all, most people, it takes about 12 hours to burn through the carbohydrates from your last meal. 12 hours, okay? At that 12 hour mark, for most of us, is when we start seeing some of the benefits. So some of you ask me, can I do a 12 and 12? You can do whatever you want, but you're missing out on the juicy yumminess, the best part of the fasting benefit, okay? Um, so most, so then once we burn through the fat, then the body, we'll start breaking down muscle for fuel. Okay, that's step three, that's starvation. That is not what you want. So that juicy spot where we're burning fat but not burning muscle tends to peak at about hour 16. Most of the studies that the physiologists worked on were done on a 16-8. 16 hours of continuous fasting followed by an eight hour eating window performed over and over and over again. There are some pretty elegant studies that are also done on what we call a 5-2, which is two days of extreme fasting, which is a 500 calorie, no more than 500 calories in a 24 hour period. You know, so it's, it's twice a week. So, you know, two days of eating whatever you want, whatever you want, no one's keeping track. Then severe fasting for one day, then another two days of eating whatever you want, then another day of fasting. So in that window somewhere. So a five, two, five days of eating anything, whatever, however, and then two days of, of extreme restriction. That has health benefits as well, okay? However, it's not habit forming. And in the Galveston Diet, which is my program, we utilize intermittent daily fasting because my program is all about building new habits, new lifestyle habits. And when you know you can skip a day and put it off and whatever you tend to get, you tend to fall off the wagon. So what I found with my students is sticking to a daily intermittent fasting schedule every day then uh, really helps build that habit. And of the three components of the Galveston diet, this is the one that people tend to stick to the most. So people are like, how do you define a fast? Medically, when we talk about fasting, it is zero calories in a fast. And one of the things I see that is absolute misinformation on the internet and usually from coaches who are trying to sell you some keto powder is this won't break your fast, that won't break your fast. This won't break your fast, that won't break your fast. Let me tell you right here, as a physician, reading all these studies, calories break your fast. Calories break your fast. You may not break your ketosis, but ketosis does not necessarily go hand in hand with fasting. So you may not break your ketosis, but you are breaking your fast. Your body is going to turn to whatever you're eating for fuel, okay? So, we don't, in the Galveston diet and the way I teach intermittent fasting, we don't eat anything. We eat no calories. Now, we drink black coffee with nothing in it. We do uh, tea, lots of water for hydration. Actually, I need my water. We just had a photo shoot here, which is why I have on makeup. Um, so, and oh, thank you everyone. Like this video, please, please, please share this video. Please like this video. I don't even know what button to tell you to like it. If y'all know how to like the video, like the video, share the, so black coffee is fine, okay? There's very few calories, like five calories in black coffee. That's okay. Um, there's a little bit of oil in, in the coffee beans. So um, that's fine. That's not gonna break your fast. So black coffee, tea, water, okay? Here is the other way. I mean, in the Galveston diet, we give you a six week window to become adapted at intermittent fasting. We coach you through it step by step. It is a, to become fast adapted, to do this correctly without wrecking your system, making you feel hungry, making your blood sugar go all over the place. You've got, and this is the advice I got, you must 
ease into this. Give yourself the gift of patience and the gift of time to become proficient at intermittent fasting, okay? Take weeks to get there. Do not expect to do this in one week or overnight. You will be miserable, you will drop your blood sugars, but if you give your body time to adjust to fasting, you will be successful. So those of you who've tried fasting in the past and couldn't do it or were too hungry or were angry or high angry and miserable, you probably rushed into it and you didn't take the time. So in Galveston diet, yes, fasting is effective with menopause. Most of my students are perimenopausal or menopausal. Of course, we have postmenopause and, and premenopause, of course. We have 65,000 students. We got everything. But the majority are women about, you know, my age. And so I'm 53. So, you know, thir late 30s, mid 30s and um, on well into your 60s. We have a few 70-year-olds too who are fabulous. So, um, so you can put whatever you want in your black coffee. Okay, someone's asking, can you put college, collagen powder? You are breaking your fast. You are losing the health medical benefits of fasting. Now, people who teach keto are only doing this for weight loss. They don't care about inflammation. They don't care about nutrition. They don't care about your long-term results. They don't care about your health. They just want you to get skinny, okay? So when, so don't, I, I, am, I am trying to cure this world of misinformation. You, bro you lose the medical benefits of fasting when you have calories during your fast. The end, okay? The end. I don't know what dry fasting is. I'm looking at the questions. And if it's not having any liquids during your fast, that is absolutely dangerous. You are never in your life should you become dehydrated unless you have no option, okay? You should constantly be, be giving your body hydration, constantly with water, okay? So um, anyway, hi. So a lot of other questions. Can I take vitamins? Can I take my supplements? Da, 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 da. Those have very few calories, if any, in them, okay? So you can do that while you're fasting and even medication unless your doctor tells you not to. However, like for me and many of my students, they get nauseated when the stomach is empty and you hit it with all these things. And so for me, I wait to take my supplements after I break my fast so I don't get nauseated. So fasting, becoming fast and proficient, the way we teach you in the Galveston diet, and I've coached tens of thousands of students through this, take your time, take your time. Oh, and if you wanna learn more about our program, hi, I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver. So many of you are jumping on right now. I'm the creator and founder of the Galveston diet. I'm a board certified OBGYN, and we're talking about the role of therapeutic fasting in women's health in perimenopause. So. And I'm trying to explain fasting, dispel some of the rumors. Okay, so remember, rule of thumb, you gotta go at you know, 12 hours is when the magic starts happening, okay? When you go past 16, you start running the risk. You, okay, this is after six weeks to get to 16 hours. It takes six weeks to become fasting proficient. You must ease into it, minute by minute by minute. Give your body time to adjust. But after hour 16, 17, you start, you start breaking down protein. You start breaking down muscle for fuel, and you don't wanna do that. So it seems like the magic is somewhere around hour 16. Of course, it's different if you're a man, if you're this old, or if you have this or that, but I'm just giving generalizations, okay? All right, so um, we're gonna talk specifically, specifically about fasting and cancer. Okay, so cancers figure among the leading causes of morbidity and mortality worldwide, approximately 14 million new cases and 8.2 million related cancer deaths. Um, among women, the five most common diagnosed cancers are breast, colorectal, lung, cervix, and stomach cancer, okay? Of these, breast cancer is considered to be the second most common cancer in the world. Um, fasting is a proven prognostic tool against cancer and other metabolic diseases, okay? Um, fasting theoretically can inhibit several critical pathways um, in the development and progression of cancer and simultaneously causing malignancies to be more sensitive to chemotherapy and radiotherapy. All right, a recent pilot study showed that periodic uh, fasting diet, so intermittent fasting, um, simultaneously uh, decreased the risk factors and biomarkers related to cancer. So for those of you who have high risk family history for these cancers, may wanna consider adopting daily intermittent fasting into your daily routine. 
if nothing else, to decrease your risk of cancer. Okay, I'm not saying you're never gonna get cancer, but you're gonna improve your risk factors and you're gonna improve your survival rate, okay, and your response to treatment. So, all right, um, tumors can not grow more than half a millimeter without having a new blood supply and fasting inhibits angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is the term where new blood vessels are formed to feed the cancer, okay? And the way a lot of cancer treatment works is to knock out the genes or knock out the, the production of these new blood vessels. Um, so fasting for 48 hours in a, in, a, in a mice model with breast cancer found to significantly suppress tumor growth, okay? So all these studies, you know, fasting should be an augmentation of breast cancer treatment and breast cancer prevention, okay? And it's free, and you can do it on your own, and nobody's going to tell you anything, okay? All right. Fasting, diet, and reproduction have mutually beneficial relationship. We all know that when you're overweight or possibly obese in early adulthood, it increases your risk of, of you know, wretched periods and fertility disorders, etc. Um, polycystic ovarian syndrome is the most common endocrine disorder in women. You know so many people in your life who have polycystic ovarian syndrome, and we need to normalize the conversation around this. So, um, so a recent study on women with PCOS revealed that stress neurohormone levels um, are chronically overactivated in people with polycystic ovarian syndrome. You out there with PCOS, you know this. <laughs> um, so short-term calorie restriction, meaning daily intermittent fasting, has been shown to correct some ovulatory consequences in women with PCOS. So daily intermittent fasting should be a regular part of your daily protocol if you have PCOS, okay? Even through perimenopause and menopause. It decreases your insulin levels, it lowers your fasting glucose levels, all of those contribute to the disease, okay? Um, so musculoskeletal conditions like osteoporosis and sarcopenia are rife with having an overwhelming impact on someone's life. If your bones and muscles don't function, you can't move. You can't move without pain. You can't lift your grandchildren. You can't go where you wanna go. Everything hurts. If you hurt, you don't sleep. It just all compounds on each other. So, um, and then your psychosocial, you know, gets affected. Anytime you're in chronic pain, it is awful. So musculoskeletal conditions, um, the prevalent, blah, 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 okay, fasting has been shown to affect parathyroid hormone secretion, um, which is thought to be beneficial in improving bone health. Um, parathyroid hormone is affected by the alteration in circadian rhythm and plays a major role in both calcium and phosphate metabolism. So all of this stuff works together. Um, fasting has been shown to ameliorate, so decrease, the clinical manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis by reducing food intolerance, diminishing gastrointestinal permeability, and decreasing the intake of precursors of inflammatory mediators like cytokines, prostaglandins, and leukotrienes. So fasting for seven to 10 days, okay, has been shown to reduce pain, stiffness, and dependent, dependence on analgesics compared to controls in rheumatoid arthritis patients, okay? All good stuff, all good stuff. It's free, I make zero money by telling you this stuff, okay? <laughs> I'm just trying to make you be healthier. So, okay. Um, osteoporosis and related fractures um, are a concern as our population continues to age. Um, the morbidity and mortality from fractures had due to low bone mineral density will likely continue to increase. You need to make sure you are doing getting adequate calcium, adequate phosphorus, vitamin D, and doing resistance training to keep those bones strong, as well as fasting. <laughs> okay. Fasting and metabolic health. So metabolic syndrome, these are those of us who have apple shapes, who have elevated blood pressure, elevated cholesterol, elevated risk for heart disease, stroke. Um, so um, elevated, oh, and, and triglycerides. So intermittent fasting has been evolved as a potential tool in readdressing metabolic abnormalities and reported in multiple studies, okay? It decreases belly fat. Okay, if you take nothing from this talk, Intermittent fasting decreases belly fat because it decreases inflammation. 
Inter- the reason why I incorporate intermittent fasting in the Galveston diet is not for weight loss. Weight loss, if on just pure IF, is, is nominal. It's, eh, it's all right. It's fine. A few pounds. But what's more important is it shifts your body composition. You have decreased belly fat deposition, okay? And you hang on to your muscle. So when you take people who are the same weight... These are more, their body composition is healthier, those who practice intermittent fasting. Even though overall weight loss is just meh, these people are a hell of a lot healthier. And the, the, the high risk fat that in the belly fat is not, is not there as much or it's reduced. So, um, four weeks of fasting has been shown to reduce total body weight, minimal, but body mass index and waist circumference. Waist circumference is the measure of belly fat. That is the most important thing. That is the thing that is most related to long-term health. Okay, so fasting and mental health. What? Um, Yes, if you're 42, not menopausal, absolutely. You're perimenopausal for sure, um, just statistically speaking, and I would absolutely recommend the Galveston diet. So for those of you who wanna learn more about the Galveston diet, wanna learn more about fasting, if you go up here, oh, like this. I don't know, how. is there a like button? Like the video, please. Please like, please share, and follow me. I have talks, I talk almost three, four times a week, all about nutrition, menopause. I talk about the Galveston diet, what it can do for you health-wise, long-term health. This is not a quick weight loss program. I mean, if you're just trying to diet your way into a um, ball gown or something, or you know, for a reunion, then we're not the right program for you. We are here for you for the long haul. We are here for, long-term health. We are here to lower your blood pressure and your cholesterol and have you sleep better and have improved uh, relationships with your family. And, you know, we have mental health that we discuss and we do min- we do mindness work, wellness work. And, you know, we talk about nutrition and how to make it work for you instead of against you. And I go through all the math and the pathophysiology for you of why this is happening to your body in middle age. So, um, Okay, so mental health. Fasting has shown to reduce the symptoms of anxiety and depression and improve social functioning. Fasting has been proved to be effective in diminishing levels of stress and depression just from fasting. It's free. (laughs) Um, So many neurological mechanisms have been proposed to describe the effects of fasting on mood. It changes your neurotransmitters so that they're working for you. It improves the college. Uh, quality of sleep and the synthesis of neurotropic factors. So many clinical observations relate to an earlier effect of fasting on depressive symptoms with an improvement in mood, alertness, and a sense of peacefulness. Fasting also rocks for brain fog, especially in the morning while you're fasting. It is absolutely fantastic. Oh, thank you. It is a jumpsuit. Actually, I had a photo shoot here today. So, um, so as women, we encounter various health issues during both pre and postmenopausal period. It affects our quality of life. Fasting is a simple, easy, free tool that you can utilize to have major health improvements in your life. So check it out. There's, I've got blogs about this at galvestondiet.com. Please like me up here somewhere. I don't know. There's a like button. Share this video with whoever. I'm going to go to the questions. So if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Go ahead and, and click this little question box down here below. Um, uh, I use sparkle brand collagen, but only after I um, break my fast. I fast every day. It is a normal, natural part of my life is fasting. So, um, I'm going to questions. Put your questions. Um, no. So, when we're fasting, you can have black coffee, plain tea, just no additives. I mean, you can, I add cinnamon and a little pinch of sea salt, but nothing with calories. So, no creamers, no collagen powder, no nothing because it may not break your keto. I don't care about keto. That's not part of the Galveston diet, but it will break your fast. So, we have no calories during our fast. I'm actually fasting right now. It is 11.20 in Texas, and I've been fasting since 7 p.m. last night, and I'm fine. I I did a 45-minute Peloton killer bike workout this morning. I had a whole photo shoot here this morning. I am fast adapted. It took me six weeks to become fast adapted. So, um, okay, I'm going to the questions. So, yes, so one of the biggest reasons why I decided to adopt intermittent fasting was the research done by Dr. Mark Mattson from the National Institutes of Health. And he um, was a researcher in dementia and Alzheimer's. 
And he was the first person that I know of that was making the, was seeing when he was experimenting with his Alzheimer and dementia models, seeing improvements in cognition while they were fasted. And so he started digging into the uh, biology of it and thought, you know, this could be a therapeutic tool for Alzheimer's and dementia patients. And so he started using this model and they got better. So fasting does a ton for brain fog. Your cognition gets better, much better. But again, you've got to become fast adapted. You can't just wake up and go 16 hours without food tomorrow if you've never done it. So, um, so I fast, I do a 16 hour fast followed by an eight hour eating window every day. So my schedule, what works for me and my family and my life though, you can set your window for whatever you want, but I have a suggestion. For me, I break my fast around noon and I'm done by 8 p.m. It's not a problem. That is, it works for my family. It works for my life. Other people, shift workers, we kind of help them work out schedules. Um, other people prefer to eat when they wake up and then fast in the evening. But I encourage you to incorporate your sleeping window with your fasting window because then it feels a lot better. <laughs> and so, um, okay, I am... You're 52, you fast every day, and you have hypothyroidism. Okay, good for you. Fasting should be helping you, hopefully. Which veggie collagen do I recommend? Uh, does anybody have any suggestions? I use Sparkle brand, which is not veggie at all. Um, so you probably just wanna take amino acids rather than collagen, because collagen is animal-based. So when you do a veggie-based collagen, they just take the amino acids, they put them into a protein. So just take the, I would just take the amino acids rather than. Um, my favorite food to break my fast, I have two. Um, one is my parfait. So I will do a plain Greek yogurt. Uh, I'll show you what I do. I do, um, let's do a little tour of my kitchen. All right, so when I fast, this is probably my favorite, and then I have a second favorite. So um, this is from my local grocery store. I do about a half a cup of this. I have no dairy intolerances. Okay, so I can eat this. This is plain. There's nothing but yogurt the way God intended yogurt to be made. It's full fat, plain, whatever. I do about a half cup of this. I add a tablespoon of chia seeds. I add a tablespoon of hemp hearts and I add a tablespoon of ground flax, okay? And then I have nuts. So I'll, I have a variety of nuts in my pantry. I'll do pistachios, I'll do seeds sometimes, I'll do sesame seeds or pumpkin seeds, I just mix it up. And I'll always do a fruit. So I'll do usually some kind of a berry because high in fiber and pretty low in the glycemic index. So I'll do, my favorite is raspberries if they're on sale, um, or strawberries or blueberries. So I'll do a quarter cup of that and a quarter cup of nuts, a tablespoon of each of these, and then my yogurt. So that's my number one favorite way. Well, do what you, I mean, if you hate yogurt, don't eat it. We're not restrictive. We don't tell you what to do. So, but she asked me what my favorite way to do it was. I mean, you can incorporate the chia and the flax and the hemp hearts and all kinds of stuff, sprinkle it on a salad. So my second favorite way is what I call the leftover salad. So I always have greens in my fridge and I will throw those in a bowl. My dressing is almost always fresh lemon juice, squeezed lemon juice, plus olive oil, salt and pepper. That's it. And so I will put, and I keep my fridge full with options. I'm almost always throwing an avocado in there. I almost always put nuts in there. I'll look at whatever we had the night before, whatever protein. I'll chop that up, throw that in from protein. So we had some grilled, we had some grilled um, tenderloin last night. So I'll probably chop up, you know, a couple ounces of tenderloin, throw that in there. And um, I'll usually put a bean, so a legume. I'll do, you know, I have black beans, red beans, whatever. I'll do a quarter cup of, of that and... Um, whatever, some olives, whatever else looks good, whatever I'm in the mood for, and I can just mix it up and then I'll toss that and that's how I break my fast. Usually one of those two ways or just straight up leftovers from whatever we had. Um, then how old am I? I am 53, I just had a birthday. So, and I live in Galveston, it's not wrong to ask. It's never wrong to ask. We should never hide our age. I'm 53 years old and um, we do not calorically restrict in Galveston diet. This is not a restrictive program at all at all. I encourage you all, check us out. Go to the website, galvisondiet.com. Um, click on this link up here. Oh, and like this video, please, 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 if you're watching, like our video. Um, 
because it helps with the algorithm or something. I don't know. Um, there's 200 of you watching right now. Uh, what is, um, okay. So I'm going to the actual questions, which are in the box down below. Uh, fasting raises cortisol probably a little bit, but not to a pathological um, level. You're, the thing that raises your cortisol probably a little bit, but not to a pathological um, level. You're, the thing that raises your cortisol is stress, okay? And fasting is a good kind of stress. We need to stress our bodies out just a little bit to encourage pathophysiology, our patho. Path, our biological pathways to become more resilient and stronger. We can definitely overstress ourselves, okay? Cortisol is necessary for survival. If you don't have cortisol, you die, okay? And so it is our fight or flight response. It's how our body is able to release energy quickly so we can run away from saber-toothed tigers or whatever was chasing us when we evolved, okay? Those stressors have gone away. We are now in protected environments where, you know, other than like, you know, you, you almost get in a car wreck or you, you know, these horrible, you, <gasps> these things happen, then your cortisol level skyrockets, okay? What's happening with cortisol is a chronic low-grade elevation from daily stress, okay? That we are not taking time out for self-care, we're not meditating, we're not journaling, we're not praying, we're not whatever you you know, whatever that looks like for you. And so we are so stressed out with drama and internet and news and, and elections and COVID and everything else that our, our cortisol levels are riding high. Not, not like you're, you're, someone's chasing you with a gun, but just enough to rock your world. There are things that raise your cortisol temporarily and then bring it down lower in the long run, like exercise. So I've seen so much misinformation long run, like exercise. So I've seen so much misinformation about exercise and women and menopause and raising cortisol and stuff. That guy is crazy, okay? I was like, what is he talking about? Am I crazy? It's like gaslighting a physician. I'm like, what is he talking about, this hormone guru, hormone expert? So I look him up. He's not a medical doctor. He's a naturopath. And that, that license is not even, re it's only recognized in two states, I think, Oregon and California. So, okay, fine, whatever. So he's practicing medicine across the internet, but he's only licensed in two states. But whatever. Um, I'm not turning him in. But um, the stuff he says is not based in science. It's his professional opinion. He's a hormone expert. He did a one-year residency in family medicine, as far as I can tell, from what I could see on his database and what the state of Oregon published. I was like, that's, that's, that's like a PA. That's like a physician's assistant training, which I have some awesome PAs. You know, and like he's done all this... I'm a board certified obstetrician gynecologist. I am a female hormone expert. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? So I start researching articles on cortisol and exercise and exercise patterns. And I'm calling on my friends in physiology and they're like, this is just made up shit. <laughs> like, okay. Yes, your cortisol levels go up with HIIT training. But you know what happens in the long run? They go down long term because exercise is good for us. It's supposed to go up when we work out a little bit. It's supposed to go up when we fast, you know, when we hit that 12 hour thing. But it's a temporary, and then our long term cortisol levels are lower over time. So there's good stressors. They make us stronger. It's why we don't sit on the couch. That's why people who are sedentary don't do well in life, okay? Because we're supposed to get up and move. So. Um, I'll, I'm with you all the way. You're an intermittent fasting coach. How do I deal with those who only believe in restricting? I try to educate, and if they don't believe what I say, I tell them to move on. I cannot make you change your mind. All I can do is present you with the data, provide you with the evidence, and you have to make your own decision, like anything in life, okay? But if I see you spouting something that is harmful and hurtful to a person that is absolutely not based in fact, I will call you out. And I don't care if you don't follow me. I don't care how many times on the internet turns me in here. Oh, thank you for liking me. Keep liking me like this. If you're just watching this guys, I've gotten turned in for nudity. I'll be in this outfit exactly. And someone will turn me in for nudity because they don't like what I'm saying. 
okay? Because I'm saying the truth or they don't agree with what I'm saying because the bots on whatever TikTok, whatever TikTok oh, they only know she's nude, take her off. So I'll, you know, if I get, if I just disappear all of a sudden, it's because some person who doesn't like what I'm saying turned me in. Okay, so I'm going to the question. So you guys have questions. Yes, I'm on hormone replacement therapy. My personal choice between me and my doctor reviewing all my risk factors, my family history, my medical history, my goals, my surgical history, my symptoms. We decided I'm a good candidate. I was willing to taste the small risk in my to for the for the health benefits, and I'm so freaking happy. I love my HRT. I love it, and I'm 53. Okay, thank you for asking. Um, all right, how do you build up to intermittent fasting? No. Intervals. I, this is this is the Galveston diet. I teach you this. I teach it to you. It is a step by step by step by step process. Not intervals. It's like you you set your marker, your time marker, and then you hit that. You get comfortable there three or four days. Then we move on to the next time marker. And so you do that over the course of several weeks. And if you do it by you know supervise in a step by step fashion, the way we teach you in Galveston diet, you are much more likely to be successful and stick to it long term because. You and stick to it long term because you built a new habit. Okay. Thank you for the likes. Oh, keep liking. Thank you. Thank you. It's going up. It's like 1.2 thousand. I'm so happy. Thank you. Um, because it helps with the algorithm, which gets a little tricky sometimes. Um, I appreciate it so much for all the love. Um, I am, does HRT affect intermittent fasting? No, it does not at all. Again, those of you who've struggled with intermittent fasting in the past probably didn't do it correctly. The best advice I can give you is give yourself six weeks. That's what we teach in Galveston Diet. Ease into it. Do not try to reach your 16-hour window overnight. Please don't. Um, Okay, if you want to learn more about Galveston Diet, um, we have a beautiful website, galvestondiet.com. You can click at the top of my page here. Please follow me if you don't follow me. At the top of my page here, hit that button and then there's a link that'll take you to our inflammation quiz, our perimenopause quiz, more information about the program. Oh my God. And I have a, a coupon. So at the top, you'll see TikTok 10, T-I-K-T-O-K-1-0. That is a code if you are interested in the program. Um, I know it's still summer for some of you and you're rushing to get your kids in school, but you know, don't negate your own health, please. Um, TikTok 10 will save 10% on any of our programs. Okay. TikTok 10. Um, T I K T O K one zero. Just put that in at checkout when you see the checkout prompt, and that will automatically take ten percent off of our program. So our programs we incorporate intermittent fasting plus an anti-inflammatory approach to nutrition, plus something I call fuel refocusing, the mindset and the mental work to learn how to break our addiction to carbohydrates. So for those of you who are suffering with sugar addiction. Um, we help you work on that, especially in our Galveston for Life community. We do a lot of mindset work. Um, we talk about habits. We talk about struggles, trials, victories. You know, it's really where our community is, um, is Galveston for Life. How long can you do the fasting diet? Fasting is not a diet, okay? It's not a way, it's not a great way to lose weight. You can eat a shit ton of crap in your during your fasting, but during your feeding window, and um, you'll still have some health benefits, but you can completely undermine most of them with poor nutritional with poor nutritional choices in your fasting window. So fasting is a lifestyle. Fasting is a fasting is therapeutic. It is a medical intervention for better health. Okay, medical intervention for better health. Um, so you can do it forever. I've done it for six years straight, or five years straight, going on six, and I will do it until I die. And let there's, do I do it every day? No, probably 94% of the days, either I'm not feeling well, or I've got some social event that kept me out later or got me up early, you know, where I'm, you know, but, but 90 something percent of the time I got it nailed. Okay. And it's only social or illness that keeps me out from doing it is a normal, natural part of my life. A book is coming in 2022. I have an agent, I have a ghostwriter and random house is about to make me an offer. So stay tuned. Um, all right, um, the program is all online, yes. So it's it's self-study, learn on your own as you do. Um, so how do I feel about a bowl of granola for breaking your fast? So granola, um, let's go on a field trip. Granola is health food, um, is actually mostly crap, described, dis disguised as health food. There's mul and not all granola is created equally. I think my kids have some in here. Hang on, we're in the pantry. Oh, shoot. The closest thing I have is grape nuts. 
You know, after all that, I, 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 hang on. We're going to take a look at granola. We're going to talk about added sugars here, um, here in a second. Let's see. Let's, my daughter bought some date bars. Okay. This is a good one. All right. Ah! So sorry. I dropped the phone. Okay. So granola. Cereal, processed carbohydrates. Granola is a highly, highly processed carbohydrate for the most part with a ton of added sugar. So here is grape nuts. Um, so probably a decent option, okay? Uh, let me flip this camera around real quick. Okay, so you always wanna look at labels, guys. So this is a cup, which is a pretty big serving, has 150 calories. Um, so, but really what I'm looking at is it doesn't have any trans fats and it really has almost no fat. It has 34 grams of carbohydrates. Five of those grams are fiber, less than one. Okay, and then insoluble fiber, that's great. It has seven grams total sugars and three grams of added sugars. So your added sugars should be less than 25 grams per day. And I go for, I try to get it under 20, okay? So this is pretty good. It is a significant source of carbohydrates. Um, but they are complex, so it's, and if you look at the ingredients here, um, if you look at the ingredients, the number one ingredient is whole grain wheat. That's what you're looking for. And then wheat flour is processed, and then the third ingredient is sugar. So it's not probably your best option. And some granolas are packed with sugar, packed. So um, now my daughter bought these date bars thinking they were healthy, but they actually have no added sugars. So, you know, um, so read your labels, know what you're putting in your body. Not all granolas are created equally. Okay, guys, keep liking. Thank you so much for the likes. I really appreciate it. Um, how does fasting affect metabolism? Okay, that's a great question. It Fasting is so fucking fantastic for your metabolism. I'm telling you, it will change your freaking life. It decreases your insulin levels. It decreases your glucose levels. It decreases your fasting insulin level, which is huge. It decreases your visceral belly fat, which lowers your levels of inflammation. It is one of the most powerful anti-inflammatory health interventions that you can do is daily intermittent fasting, daily intermittent fasting. Um, so good for you. Fasting can affect your periods. If your periods are irregular due to polycystic ovarian syndrome, simply the practice of fasting can lower those insulin levels enough where your ovaries start functioning again and your periods become regular. That is what we see as physicians. Um, is 12 to 14 hour fast beneficial or only 16? 12 is when the magic starts happening. Okay. 12 is just, you've just hit the window of medical beneficial, you know, therapeutic, of, of thera the therapeutic window begins at about hour 12 for most people. So 14 hours, pretty good. You got about a two hour magic window there. 16 is best. After 16 is typically when we see muscle starting to be broken down for fuel, not just fat. So, you know, it's different for everyone. It depends on what you ate your last meal, how much you exercise, whatever, but these are just generalizations. So I try to stick to about a 16, maybe a 17 every day. So I try to maximize those benefits. Um, so hopefully that answered is the 16-8 the best. Feelings on BioT. I wasn't trained on it. I don't have any medical, you know, randomized control studies in, that I've seen that really support, you know, the use of testosterone therapy. Women are supposed to have low testosterone. It's not, that's not considered a pathologic condition. Um, but I have people I know in my life who are, board certified OBGYNs and they die, they prescribe it and they say that their patients love it. But I, I, so I really don't have an opinion on it because I wasn't trained in it. I really know only what the FDA studies show and they really don't support the use in women. Um, so, but again, you have to make your own decision. Um, can HRT bring back menopause symptoms? The function of HRT is to decrease your menopausal symptoms. So, it, all HRT does is masks the symptoms of menopause. It just puts you back in the premenopausal state as far as estrogen for the most part. Um, but once you stop HRT, the menopausal symptoms absolutely can return. Um, I love you. I love you too. Okay. Um, all right, guys. You get yucky. Three days of fasting. Any suggestions? Sarah, you're not fasting correctly. You need to ease into this. You need to take six weeks to get to your fasting window. Anybody who rushes into fasting will feel like shit three days in. So absolutely normal. 
Um, yes, I fast every single day. It is a normal habit. It is part of my life. It's not even anything I think about anymore. Um, yes, intermittent fasting absolutely increases. It fights cancer. There's, I, I have studies. I just went, went through the studies at the beginning of this talk. Intermittent fasting helps strengthen your immune system. Why? It's just enough stress to make your cells more, to, to, to turn on the bots inside of our, the enzymes inside of our cells to make them more resilient and more able to fight disease. We need a little bit of stress in our life in order to make our body more resilient and fight disease. So um, this is why I incorporated in Galveston Diet more for the health benefits than for the weight loss. This is a long-term health program. So um, you can learn more about us. Check us out at galvestondiet.com. Everybody asks about the different levels. So if it's an it's a online self-study program. It is written material. It is videos. It is graphics. Because as an adult educator, I taught medical students and residents for 20 years. I know that people, some people need to hear it. Some people need to see it. Some people need to read it. Some people need to see the visual graphics of it. So I have all of those resources there for you because I know adults, all we all learn differently. And you can go at your own pace, okay? So the basic program is the, is the Galveston Diet Signature. Gold program is Signature plus a lot of the aids and guides that we developed, the companion guide, the recipe collection, the workout course. All of that is included in gold. Platinum is all of gold plus a month in our coaching boot camp. So boot camp's not for everyone, but it is basically we're gonna spoon feed you the Galveston Diet step by step by step. And you get to form a community with a lot of other women just like you who are going through the same things and you're sharing your, your triumphs, your struggles, your, you know, and you have co our certified coaches and myself are in there really holding your hand and teaching you the program over 28 days. Oh, thank you. We had a photo shoot here today. So I'm opening a clinic in Friendswood, Texas. It's going to be called Mary Claire Wellness. And we did a branding photo shoot for that today. So I got all dressed up in my hair and makeup done. Um, so super excited. I know it's summer. I know we're all struggling to figure out school and what this new life is going to look like and mass, no mass and uh, whatever. And are they going? Are they not? You know, and everybody has kind of put off their own health um, in order to focus on their family. But guys, join. Get this under your belt. And then September, you're going to kick it. Okay. Our next coaching group starts September 5th. And I, I really invite you to join it. Remember, TikTok 10, you will save 10% on the cost of all of our programs on Signature Gold and Silver. You just put in the code TikTok 10, T-I-K-T-O-K, the way the app spells it, one zero at checkout. Okay, keep liking. I don't know where the like button is. I usually point to where the buttons are. Like, please like this. Thank you so much for joining. So many of you come in and out. If you don't know who the hell this woman is, I am Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I am the creator and founder of the Galveston Diet. I am a board certified obstetrician gynecologist. I am a mother of two amazing, gorgeous girls. I am uh, happen to be stuck with the same dude for 25 years. <laughs> I've been married. I just had my 25th anniversary. We're still making it work. Um, so we are, um, Galveston Diet is a labor of love for me, developed to treat my own menopausal weight gain. <laughs> um, I'm 53 years old, and it's, it's a long story. I lost my brother died. I went through grief and depression. I was going through menopause. I was just eating whatever. I was, go you know, all the little tricks that I did to stay thin all those years stopped working. I was frustrated. I started, you know, work out more, eat less. That was the only thing that was work, you know, that I, that I told patients to do. You must go to the gym. You must come restrict your calories. I never paid attention to nutrition. I mean, I knew not to go to get fast food and I knew, but I was eating low fat, low cal stuff out of bags and boxes. I never knew how much magnesium I was getting or vitamin D or fiber. I didn't pay nothing, nothing. I was taught none of that. I just did. I was a robot and in medicine. We become robots. We just do what we're told. Da, da, da. Give her this, take this pill. But, and then finally it happens to me and I'm embarrassed. If you guys were my patients back in the day and I told you to go to the gym and you're like, I did, it's not working. And I was like, mm, I'm fucking sorry. I'm sorry. I was an asshole because I did what I was taught and I didn't think outside of the box. So now I'm fixing all that. And if you were my patient, I told you that I will give you the program for free. So uh, no, all my patients have come back and they're all doing Gallus and Diet. They love me. So, um, so I hit the books. I'm a scientist. I remember crying like, 
like telling my husband, I don't know what's wrong with me. Why can't I lose this weight? And he was going on a trip. My husband works overseas. Like right now he's in Kazakhstan for seven weeks and I hope he doesn't come back dead because he's lost two teammates to COVID. Like they don't have what we have here in the U.S. He's vaccinated. Thank you, Jesus. Um, and so he's, he's as protected as he can be. But Delta is a motherfucker. And um, he is taking care of his, you know, unit over there. And two of his Kazakh, Kazakh contractors have died. Guys in their 40s, dead. Okay. They are very picky about the vaccine over there because they are very picky about the vaccine over there because they were former Soviet Union. They hate the Russians. And the only vaccine available to the locals was the Russian vaccine, the, the Sputnik. They call it Sputnik. And um, they refused it. And so now they're dead. And he's just torn up about it. And so he was trying to figure out if he can get them American vaccine, whatever, whatever. So my husband, so he's going on this trip. And I'm like, when you get back, I'm going to have, I said, you're going to have the wife you deserve. I'm going to lose this weight. I'm going to triple down at the gym. I'm going to, and I was already obsessive about it, you know? And he was like, you sound like a crazy person. I was like, what? Don't tell a woman who's on a rant that she sounds like a crazy person. <laughs> and he's like, I love you. You are gorgeous. I love you no matter what size you are this you're affected up here now like like you're smart you can figure this out but remember what you tell me mary claire if what you're doing is not working you need to change what you're doing so you going to the gym working out and starving yourself has got to change and so that was like my wake-up call and so i called my registered dietitian friends at the university i worked out i called the nutrition department i delivered all of their babies okay so i'm like what's going on and they're like mm. There, it's it's happening in menopause. We know it happens. I'm like, I know it happens. It's happening to me. I'm like, why? And they're like, well, we think this, we think that. And they just threw a bunch of articles at me. And I started just that deep dive in research, reading, reading everything I can get my hands on. And, you know, I didn't create this research. I'm just reading what other people did. And I start pulling it all together. Like, wait, inflammation, aging and inflammation, hormones and inflammation. How does this all work together? And so I'm like, I got, I've got to like, like, wait, what causes inflammation nutritionally? Oh my God, I'm eating all these things. I'm not eating enough of these things that fight inflammation. Okay. I got that. And then the, the intermittent fasting. Oh my God, the studies, you guys, it is mind blowing, mind boggling why not everyone in the world practices intermittent fasting regularly. I'm telling you, it is absolutely critical for long-term health in middle life, in midlife and, and over. So, okay. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to do that. And then I got to break this addiction to these goldfish. I was eating my kids goldfish, my kids goldfish. I bought them for me by the handful. That was my stress food, like, because they were little and I could crunch them in my hand and then I could eat them one moment. And, um, you know, I had to stop that. And so part of Galveston diet became fuel refocusing, learning how to really focus on nutrition, focus on good carbohydrates, healthy carbohydrates, healthy fats, stop breaking this crazy train of low fat, low fat, low fat. And it worked like a charm. And the Galveston diet was born. So, um, I was able to reverse these habits, build new healthy habits, and then teach other people how to do it. Um, so, um, I, I'm sorry, these questions are popping up about vaccines. This is not meant to be a vaccine talk, guys. I took whatever vaccine was available from my employer. I just took the first one. I did not read, I, I was like, give it to me as soon as possible. I was in January, I was one of the first. So I was working in a hospital still at the time before I opened my clinic. And um, I was so desperate to put this behind us that I just, I was like, it was Pfizer. It was what was available, so I just took it. So, um, so yeah, that was months ago. So um, nuts are not a no-no food. Nuts are amazing, and so, but they're very high cal. So I'm not saying, you know, we don't restrict calories, but you gotta be mindful. You know, I'm not negating calories in, calories out, but there's so much more to weight and nutrition and life than that, and nutrition and life than that. You know, if you're just restricting calories, you're doing yourself a disservice. So nuts can be incredibly helpful, okay, and incredibly packed with nutrition and healthy fats and vitamins and minerals and fiber. So I'm a huge fan. I have them every day in some point. But if you just sit there and eat a gallon of nuts, you're going to gain weight because they are very high cal. So, um... So walk me through your fasting day, please. Okay, so I get up in the morning and I do my meditation and journaling and then I go work out. 
And so I, it takes me about 20 minutes to do my meditation and journaling and I work out for about an hour. And so then I have black coffee. I drink tons of water throughout the day. I run errands, I work, I do whatever. And then I break my fast at around noon. I typically break my fast, as I was saying earlier, with a parfait. So like Greek yogurt with, I do flax seeds, chia seeds and hemp hearts with um, a, a berry and some nuts, okay? So that is how I break my fast. I've got my healthy fats, I've got my protein, I've got my antioxidants, I've got my anti-inflammatories, I've got my fiber. I mean, this is like freaking killer, okay? Way to break your fast. Or I'll do what I call the leftover salad. So I always keep greens in my fridge. I'll always have lemon. I, my, my dressing is olive oil and lemon juice. That's it, you know, maybe some vinegar. Um, salt and pepper, and then I'll put olives, I'll put avocado, there's my fiber, there's my healthy fats, I'll, whatever protein we had the night before, like I've got leftover steak, I will probably chop that up for my salad if I don't have a parfait, I haven't decided yet, I've been talking so much. So um, anyway, um, I'm gonna jump off soon. You guys check us out at galvestondiet.com. I'm so excited to talk to you and share all these great things about intermittent fasting with you. Please like this video. We're at 2.5, 2,500 likes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, share this video, like the post, go look at the TikToks. I have so much great information on TikTok. You can look at the collections and learn about Galveston diet. You can learn about medical information, gynecology information, whatever you want. All right, everybody, have a fantastic day and we'll chat again soon.